The state of Florida is famous for many things, but its beaches could be the most prized of all. People from all over the world flock here to experience its amazing coast. There is not one place in the state more than 60 miles from the nearest beach. Florida's total coastline stretches about 1,200 miles, making it the second longest of any state after Alaska. To the east lies the chilly Atlantic Ocean, and to the west, the warm Gulf of Mexico. Besides the beaches, the coasts are also home to mangrove forests, salt marshes, lagoons, seagrass meadows, and coral reefs. Each of these ecosystems is unique and important in its own way, and that's what we're here to explore in this edition of Wild Florida. So sit back, relax, and I'll tell you a tale of two coasts. The beaches of Florida are known for their sparkling sand. Did you know that it originated in the Appalachian Mountains? It all began when sediments eroded in the mountains of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, and they flowed southward by way of streams and rivers. The quartz in these rocks broke down physically, but not chemically, and it all finally arrived in Florida in the form of quartz sand. This process began about 30 million years ago, and it continues to this day. On the other hand, it's a different story for the beaches in the southernmost part of Florida. They are farther from the flow of mountain quartz, and so their sands are composed of the fragments of broken shells and coral. On many beaches, you will find tall dunes of sand. These are formed when the winds blowing toward land are blocked by clumps of grass and driftwood. Sand is then deposited in the lee, or the sheltered side, of the back area of the beach. Florida is prone to intense hurricanes, and dunes on beaches are the land's foremost protection from floods caused by these storms. Wave energy along both coasts is usually low. On the Atlantic coast, at high tides, the water rises about six feet. By contrast, high tides on the Gulf Coast only raise the water about two feet. It's especially low on the West Coast because the continental shelf of the Gulf of Mexico has shallow slopes. Gulf waters are a lot less chilly than the Atlantic because they are warmed by the Loop Current, which enters the Gulf between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula and exits between Cuba and the southern tip of the Florida Peninsula. Many animals make their home on Florida's beaches, including horseshoe crabs, ghost crabs, sanderlings, and beach mice, sea turtles, jellyfish, and sharks swim just offshore. In some areas, a reef, sandbank, or barrier island may separate a smaller body of water from the sea, creating a lagoon. Waters in a lagoon are calm, shallow, and brackish, which is a mix of fresh water from inland rivers and the salt water from the sea. One of the most important lagoons in Florida is the Indian River, which stretches 156 miles along central Florida's Atlantic coast. It provides spawning ground for many types of fish, including the bull shark, and it is also a sanctuary for juvenile green sea turtles. Manatees and dolphins are common in its waters. Dolphins in the Indian River live in much smaller family groups than they would in the open ocean, because in the quiet lagoon waters, they do not need the safety in numbers. Beneath the surface of many lagoon waters, there are meadows of marine plants called seagrasses. They can only grow in clear waters because they need a lot of sunlight to flourish. 
Seagrasses are an important source of food for turtles, manatees, conchs, and sea urchins, and offer fish and crustaceans shelter from predators. Algae and small animals that live on the leaves of seagrasses also feed creatures like fish and shellfish, which in turn are the main food source of dolphins and seabirds. In addition to providing food and shelter for many animals, the grasses benefit water quality by using their leaves to trap sediments and particles, thereby keeping the water clear. Some trees thrive in coastal environments, and mangroves are a perfect example. These trees are instantly recognizable by their clumped and tangled roots, which protect shorelines from storm surges and tidal waves. Mangrove forests cover about 469,000 acres in Florida. They can only grow in places where the average temperature does not get below 65 degrees, and so you will only find them along the southern half of the state's coastlines. Marine creatures like barnacles and sponges attach themselves to the roots of the mangroves and filter water through their bodies. This traps and cycles important nutrients. Mangrove roots also offer fish and crustaceans shelter from predators, making them a perfect nursery for these animals. The branches of the trees are used by coastal birds like pelicans and spoonbills for their nests. While mangroves are common along the southern portions of both coasts, when you go further north you will find salt marshes. These wetlands occur in zones between low and high tides. You will find salt marshes along both of Florida's coasts, but they are most common along the Gulf Coast because they flourish under low wave energy. The greatest concentration is from Apalachicola Bay south to Cedar Key. Salt marshes protect coastal communities by absorbing rainwater and reducing the risk of flooding. Finally, Florida is the only state besides Hawaii where you will find coral reefs. They are limited only to the southern tip of the peninsula and the islands of the Keys. The reefs here are about 10,000 years old. At first glance, a coral may look like a rock or a plant, but corals are actually animals. In fact, what we call single corals are actually whole colonies of animals. A reef is a ridge of rock beneath the ocean surface, and a coral reef is formed when the living tissues of coral, called polyps, cluster in groups. You may call coral reefs the rainforests of the ocean because they contain an amazing variety of life. At least 25% of all sea creatures around the world make their homes in coral reefs. In Florida's reefs, there are over 650 types of fish and over 40 types of coral. Thus concludes our tale. I hope you've enjoyed coasting through these environments. Be sure to subscribe for more Wildlife Chronicles. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on our next adventure.